And in that mission, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he would have some problems. And whenever he would run into problems, Allah would send some of his instructions, his words, his advice, his counsel, his his, his you know wisdom to help the Prophet. So, for example, Allah's Messenger is talking to the business people from Quraysh. Allah would send him the story of Shu'aib, and he talked to business people, right? So for the Prophet, it's not just a story. What is he using that as? A case study for how to talk to Quraysh. You understand? If you and I don't put ourselves in the struggle of the Prophet, because the Prophet's mission, وسلم, his mission is not over. As he was leaving, he said, now it's your mission. Then the one who's here should deliver it to someone who's not here. We have to carry the message of Islam. We have to carry that message. So our life has now become a mission. And when our life becomes a mission, then Quran will become relevant to us. If your life is not a mission, if you don't take on the mission that the Prophet himself took on, and you take some part of it, you can't do everything, you take some part of it, then you'll start seeing Quran in a different light. It'll be something completely different to you. Now I have 10 minutes left. And I, this 10 minutes, imagine you heard nothing today. This 10 minutes is completely different. This completely different conversation with you guys. I want to tell you that some people, they live their life worshipping different things. Some people worship their body. They take care of their diet, they work out every day, they you know, look at themselves in a the mirror every chance they get. They worship their, their physical self. You know? Some people worship their athletic ability. That's all they think about. Some people worship their career. Some people worship their investments. Some people worship their appearance. Some people worship their, their entertainment. Some people worship their, you know, their, their car. Literally, their car. Some people worship their Apple products. <laughs> you know, they do. Some people worship their video games, some people worship their, their, their and people count things. Allah says about the Quran, huwa khayrun min ma'ajma'un, it's better than what you're, account, what you're gathering. Specifically, he didn't say it's better than your money, the Quran is better than your money, he said the Quran is better than what you're gathering. The word gathering is really cool, because you know what people do, right? right? People gather, back in the day geeks used to gather stamps and coins, and people gather baseball cards, then the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and Yu-Yu Hakusho and Pokemon, and, right? All these other, I've learned so much Japanese over the last few years. Right? People gather video games, people gather movie collections, people gather Facebook friends, people gather YouTube hits, people gather things. People gather, you know, people gather money, money is an obvious one, right? People gather awards, championship rings, certificates, certifications, right? Titles, people gather these things. People, we spend our life gathering stuff. Allah says, if you can have Quran, it's better than anything else you're gathering. Gather Quran, collect Quran, collect surahs, memorize them, learn them, internalize them. It's better than anything you gather. But the, the, this 10 minute conversation, it started with, we are all, there are people that worship things. What that means is the most important thing in their life is something. Either it's their body, or their clothes, or their money, or their car, or their shoes, or their house, or their children or their business or their career or their reputation or their political standing but they be, this one thing becomes the obsession of their life that's all they think about for a muslim there's nothing wrong with having a nice car nice clothes taking care of your body all of these things are fine but that's not why we're living that's not the mission of our life the mission of our life is the mission of the prophet sallallahu he gave us a mission already all of these things are only there like recess at work. You know how you take a 30 minute break at work? We came to this earth to put ourselves to work. And then in the break you can enjoy some good things Allah gave you. So you can refresh yourself, regather your energy, so you can go back to work and get to work again. But we were here to work. The message of the Quran is this. That's, that's the summary of it. You and I are slaves of Allah. That means we are on a mission. We can enjoy this world, but we don't live in this world for it. And there are many Muslims, Muslims, a good majority of Muslims, 
who don't live their life as a mission. They live their life for their house, or for their children, or for their clothes, or for their reputation, or for their social standing. And they live their lives for their careers and their businesses. They live their lives for them. You know? And there are those who have good family, good business, good house, and all, but they don't live for those things. They live for something much more important. You have to ask yourself who you are. I can't answer that for myself. Or I can only answer that for myself. And I have to check the answer every now and then. I have to keep going back and check that answer. But only you can ask that question of yourself and answer that for yourself. What do you live for? And if you want to ask yourself that question honestly, remember this Arabic expression. The Arabs have a saying. Man ahabba shay'an dhakarahu kathira. Whoever loves something, they remember it a lot. They think about it a lot. Whatever you live for is what you think about all the time. Maybe it's work. You're always thinking about work. Maybe it's business. Always thinking about business. Maybe it's your, your college. Always thinking about college. Where are you going to graduate? Maybe it's that girl you want to marry. Always thinking about her. Can't get your mind off her. That happens too, right? That happens too. Maybe it's your kids. Always thinking about your kids. Maybe your kids got married and you're thinking your, your mother-in-law and you're always thinking about how much you hate his wife. Right? And how she took your son away. And how she's raising her, you know, your grandchildren in a way you don't like. You know? That happens too. Sometimes people just get obsessed with something and that's all they live for. And they kill themselves that way. We will find real peace when we take on, we become a small part of the mission of Allah's Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi And we teach our children, our families to become part of that mission. And then we recite the Qur'an, which is there to help us along that mission. That's what it's supposed to do. Then everything in life will become sweet. Last bit. I share these 10 minutes, the last part of this 10 minutes. You know, Allah complains in the Qur'an, He, he destroyed many nations, right? And He made a complaint in the Qur'an, in Surah Yunus. How come not a single nation that I sent a messenger to listen to the messenger? Except the nation of Yunus, he makes the exception of Yunus, right? But he makes a complaint in the Qur'an. How come not a single one listened to the messenger? And if they only listened to the messenger, I would have... We would have provided them, we would, basically, I'll translate it properly, we would have hooked them up. <laughs> we would have hooked them up. They would have lived it up in this world. They would have had everything, if they just listened to me. Because then, please listen to this, the world would be in their hands. Not in their hearts. For a lot of people, the world is in here. Even if it's not in here. We're supposed to be people, dunya is in our hands. Has no place in our hearts. Our hearts have a bigger problem, a bigger concern, a bigger agenda, a bigger mission. May Allah make us a people of that bigger mission. Amen. Our Master, make our hearts full of light with the light of the Quran. May Allah Azza wa instill a love أَثْهِلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا حُبَّ الْقُرْآنِ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ Enter into our hearts a love of the Book of Allah, a love of the Qur'an. وَجْعَلْهُ لَا إِمَامًا وَنُورًا وَهُدًا وَرَحْمًا And make it for us a leader, and a guide, and a light, and a source of mercy. Allah says, قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِضَةٌ مَنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّمُورِ A heart-penetrating advice has come to you from Allah. Qur'an should go inside your heart where the disease is. The medicine should go where the disease is, right? So it should go inside. And once it goes inside, when the medicine goes inside where the disease is, what does it do? It cures. وَشِفَاءٌ And it cures what is inside the chest. You know, where you and I are heart patients. And the Qur'an goes in, and it starts curing. And when it starts curing, now Allah says, now you can follow my guidance. وَهُدَانُ And it's a, it's a means by which you can follow a path, a guidance. Now you start following Allah's guidance once the disease has been cured, now you deserve Allah's mercy. So he says, وَرَحْمَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And a mercy for those who believe. The ayah began with people. Ya أَيُّهَا nas, People, counsel has come to you that goes inside the heart and cures. And it ended with, it's a mercy for believers. You know what that means? The invitation is for all, but the mercy will only be for those who accept it and actually believe. Allahumma ja'alna min al-mu'mineen. Allahumma ja'alna min al-mu'mineen. May Allah make us from those who truly believe. I really, really enjoyed coming here. I know it's really, really hot in here. Uh, um, again, I won't quote the ayah, but you can think of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
Michelle, on your own. I wish we had more time to spend with each other also. Um, I do ask you to make dua, especially for my family, my, my parents, my children, all six of them. Alhamdulillah. Yes, I have six. Four, uh, uh, four daughters and two sons, alhamdulillah. Um, and I make dua for my wife. She's a trooper. You know, because if, if she, I, Allah knows, I can do anything. I can do anything. I can talk to this crowd. I can't control six kids. I can not for ten minutes. I, I die. So, so, you know, make dua for her. Um, if you if you take anything back from this session today, inshallah ta'ala, start with yourself and start with your family. And start by being the best you can be to them. And inshallah, everything, the bigger things I talked about today, they will start coming into place. <laughs> That's, that means I should stop, right? That's, that's what that means. Thank you so much for listening carefully and being patient with me. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu wa dhalak. Okay, don't get up. Hey, 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 hey. He's got to make announcements. They're very patient. These guys put it together. I just came here.